Hi, this is Anne with uh, the first in what I think is going to be a series of anagrams on um, coding up the um, AIAN st census statistics code this week. Uh, I think <clears throat> some of you could just go ahead and code this. Um, you may be familiar with um, accumulating these statistics from another language. It may just make more sense to you, but um, you're not required to invent algorithms in this class. You're re you're required to become familiar with them. So I'd like to give you some help here if you need it. Um, this first vid is actually just gonna be about getting set up to do this work and some things that I think um, could be really helpful that you might not think of yourself. So the first thing I'm gonna do, um, this actually happens for you automatically the minute you start forking my code. But um, when I'm working on something, if I want to, if I want to take off from where the starting code um, starts for you, I have to actually explicitly fork that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And um, just so neither of us gets confused, I'm going to go ahead and make that private. So the actual stats are available to you, and we're going to make this the working. Okay. All right. So I'm here in Replit, and um, I'm going to work um, in this code. So your job starts with reading this instruction. And one of the things there is to read the code, um, try to think through what, the, what it's going to do, the current code. And then at the bottom of this file, um, once again, there's a set of comments that you need to fill in. And you won't get full points if you don't update the comments. Um, however, I'm going to start at the point where I'm thinking about trying to actually change code. So I'm going to start um, down here in step two and think about what's going to happen when I activate these various um, functions and come over here and grab the function outlines out of this file. And um, first thing is always just to run the code you've got, make sure that I'm giving you working code fix it if not. And um, one thing you'll notice just right off the bat is that um, although there are only 12 states um, in this array, uh, by the time you go to print them out, they take up a lot of vertical space. And so um, this is kind of borderline. If it was 20 states, I would definitely do what I'm about to do. At 12, I might soldier on and just use all of them. But I think particularly for the for demonstrating code to you all, it'll make more sense if um, I make up a test data list as opposed to use this whole one here. So um, I'm going to do a couple of things. First of all, let's make that sort of narrow. And we don't need as much space here. So I'd like to have as much space for my code as I can get. And what I want to do down here in my run function is um, this is the raw data object list, and I'm going to borrow the first line of that. Come down here and make a test list. Okay. And um, just make all the data here short and simple. So its name is state one, um, population, let's make that a two, and this is a hundred because then we know that the percentage is going to be 2%. And um, I'm just going to duplicate that and have a total of four entries in this. So um, you might ask, why, why four? Why not three or two? Um, and there are a couple of things here. Um, sometimes old programmers just do things a certain way, and that certainly describes me. Um, if you're trying to find mins and maxes, one of the things your code, one of the most common defects is for your code to be just sort of reflexively returning the first or the last entry. Um, just because you're working through an array and if you don't have the if statement right, you could just end up with either always the first entry or the last entry. So when you're trying to find mins and maxes, you want an array large enough that the min entry and the max entry are never, never the first or the last one. So let's make this the max. Let's make this the min. 
and let's make this something different. Okay, so we now have a four entry array where um, we know what we're going to get for percentages for each of the populations. We know what, uh, which one's the min, which one's the max. And, um, and when we go to run that and print that out, it's going to be nice and short. So the first thing we want to do here is any place where we're using the raw data object, we don't want to delete that because at some point you need to turn in code that uses the real thing. So let's just go ahead and for each of these two lines, we're going to comment out the code that uses that and replace it with test. So the first thing we do is just print out the test list. And then um, actually it's kind of nice here. This code already um, adds a percentage value to the list that it's handed and you get back an enhanced list. So from this point far down, we don't need to change anything. All we have to do here is um, duplicate this line, comment out the real copy, and here make this test list. And um, if I did that right, then, um, and I run it, then what we should see is that all that test data, even when being dumped out in some amount of gory detail, um, shows up nicely in, in the window that you have here. So we're processing four states. This is the raw data. And down here, um, we're adding a percentage value, which actually, if you have two out of 100, um, the percentage is also two. So um, don't let that confuse you. That actually is a percentage. Okay, so now we have a nice small amount of data to work with, and we're going to um, come down here and move the start of this block comment down below the first function call. And um, if we run that, okay, we get um, a nice little error message. It says get highest AI AN population state doesn't exist which is fair because we don't have that function in our code. So um, what should happen is if I did this right, for any function call that's here that you are supposed to activate one by one, um, you should be able to come over here and find an outline, including comments, um, come back and over here above the run function, insert that. Um, these comments don't have anything for you to update this time. Uh, they're just intended to help you figure out what the code's doing. So we're trying to use um, comments the way they are supposed to be used. And at this point, um, you are getting the, the, not the maximum population number, but we are looking to return the state object that is the state with the maximum value, which in our case, um, we already know what that's gonna be. It's, um, it's S2, which has a population of four. So um, if I run this, okay, um, I don't get the same kind of um, error message because we're not crashing because the function is missing, but the function declares state it declares maximum and sets a zero and then it returns state and state's never actually given a value. So I'm gonna stop this video here. I think some of you would want the fun of implementing this loop and finding the maximum yourself. Um, so I'll be done here. This is all set up. And then the next video will show me implementing this code.